sequence induction. So once we've made ourselves a functional immunoglobulin or B cell receptor, we need to check and make sure that it's, it's able to um, do its job right. So that's what tolerance is all about. So immature B cells in the bone marrow that are recognized, that recognize self antigens become tolerant. Um, um, they're either going to be eliminated or they're going to be rescued. And there are three separate mechanisms that we have to make a B cell tolerant, to make it tolerate its own uh, neighboring cells. Um, these are receptor editing, clonal elimination or depletion, really just killing themselves, and then clonal inactivation or energy. And all these things collectively are known as central tolerance because this is something that's happening in the bone marrow. All right, so for immature B cells, these guys are going to be characterized by the surface, uh, the expression, sorry, of the surface IgM only, because remember, mu is the first one that we start to make, and then the, the absence of a signal stronger than that provided by the tonic BCR signaling. The cells are going to therefore exit the bone marrow as immature transitional B cells because they're transitioning from the primary lymphoid organs to the secondary lymphoid organs. And then the final stage of maturation and selection is going to occur in the secondary lymphatics, right? So here we see an immature B cell in the bone marrow. And if it re has no reaction with the self antigen, then it's going to move to the blood and start to express IgD and IgM. If it's going to react with the self antigen, which is not something we do want to do. It's going to be retained in the bone marrow, hopefully saved by one of those mechanisms that we just talked about. Uh, but if not, it's going to end up getting killed or inactivated, one of the other two. Two mechanisms we have for saving these B cells that we just spent so much time making immunoglobulin chains with is receptor editing and then clonal deletion. So immature B cells are going to be binding to multivalent self antigens. Usually cells or tissues are going to undergo receptor editing or they're going to be deleted. We want to try to save these guys, right? So that's why we do this. So this is a diagram here that for some reason looks very goofy and I don't know if it's because of the PowerPoint format that I was using. But anyways, self antigen is going to litig uh, il litigate, sorry, immature B cells IgM matching here. So we're gonna go ahead and test it, see if it's compatible with this antigen here. Uh, immature B cell is gonna continue to, assuming that it's not, rearrange its light chain genes, right? This is receptor editing. Hopefully we can get something going here. So the immature B cell makes a new light chain and thus an IgM with a different specificity, okay? Great, so if this new receptor is self-reactive, then we're gonna keep trying, right? So we're gonna try again and again. And if it works, then we go ahead and leave and develop onward. And if it doesn't work after again, we'll keep trying. And then once we've used up and recomb recombined, would have been a probably better choice of words there, um, everything that we have, we're only thing that we have nothing left, we're gonna undergo apoptosis. So anyways, so for clonal inactivation, um, this is something that's happening in a monovalent self antigen. So this is usually something to where we are in the blood vessel or in the periphery sometimes is, is what it's called. Um, and we may ha have a B cell that's being reactive to one of our soluble proteins. So say a protein in the bloodstream. And whereas we can't really kill him because if we were to kill him, the debris that we would have would, would cause some, some problematic situations. We go ahead and just inactivate him. And then after about five days at the most, he's going to go ahead and just die through entropy as, as well. We don't have to waste any pr precious ATP and resources in you know, cleaning up the dead cells that, that would have died in, in the middle of your bloodstream. So immature transitional B cells, like we said, they're transitioning from the primary lymphoid organs to the secondary lymphoid organs. They're, they're B cells that have kind of, they're la they've left the bone marrow, yes. Um, they've either matured, become energetic, or they're gonna be killed or in the process of clonal deletion. And they can be either B1 or B2 cells. Now, we'll talk a little bit more in depth about the differences between the two of these. But B2 are the normal ones. These are the ones, that are the most common ones that we've referred to throughout this entire uh, class at this point. B1 we'll talk about later, though. The fate of this newly formed B cell is dependent, dependent on B cell receptor signaling after antigen encounter. This whole thing is collectively known as peripheral tolerance, right? And so we have clonal deletion, energy, and maturation. And so the, whether or not it's being activated or whether or not it's actually encountering a self-antigen is going to have some pretty drastic impacts onto his future, right? Um, that's what this picture in the diagram on the, on the right of my, well, my right, I guess your right as well, is showing. So energy and clonal deletion. Typically, recognition of a membrane bound, uh, that should say Ig, results in clonal deletion. Recognition of soluble protein results in weaker BCR signaling, and therefore, if it's weaker BCR signaling, we have energy, uh, energy, right? So, antigenic cells are really hard to activate. 
they're readily killed if they do interact with that activated helper T cell. And then the FASL on the T cell delivers a death signal to, via the FAS on the anergenic B cell. But for the most part, assuming it doesn't combine or come in contact with the helper T cell, it'll just go ahead and die through the, the process of entropy, like things age, like, like we age. <laughs> so for maturing B cells, again, like we said, the degree of B cell receptor stimulus is believed to dictate how the B cell transitions from an immature state to the mature state. And this is the process of, of, of positive selection, right? Which makes sense, right? I want my B cells that are very strongly reactive, especially in the presence of antigens. Those are the ones that I'm going to want to go on and to, to be the ones that are going to end up fighting the, the bacteria and the viruses and all that stuff, right? And so this is positive selection now. Um, so weak B cell receptor signals are sufficient to drive transition into the mature B cells. Yes, this is true. So we have CCR7. This is expressed on the naive B cell. So if it says R, it usually tends to be that it's a uh, receptor, usually at least. Uh, in response to CCL19 and CCL21, these are all just chemokines here, CCR5 is expressed on B cells in response to CCLX, CCXCL13. Okay, so let's just, uh, to put this really simply here, these guys right here, they are receptors, whereas all of these guys over here, as the L, what does the L stand for? Well, the L stands for ligands. Okay, so chemokine CCL21 attracts the immature B cells to the HEV. And for the purposes of this, we're just going to consider this the uh, introductory point to the lymph nodes. Um, and then once the chemokines CCL21 and CCL19 attract the B cells into the lymph node. And so here we see the dendritic cells and all the other cells. So chemokine CXCL13 is going to attract B cells into the primary follicle. Um, if you're forgetting all this stuff, be sure to check out my video for the primary and secondary lymphoid organs in terms of their structures and functions. That'll help you out a lot. And then interactions with follicular dendritic cells cytokine, and other cytokines as well is going to drive the maturation of immature B cells. Whereas mature B cells are going to recirculate in the lymph and then the secondary lymphoid uh, tissues as well. So it's this very long dynamic process that we have of maturation at the, both the positive, I'm sorry, maturation at the primary and the maturation at the secondary lymphoid organs. So once we develop two A mature B cell, they're going to characterize by both IgM and IgD on the cell surface. They're going to recirculate between the blood and then the secondary lymphatics, just like this, the lymphatic system does. And then they're going to transition from the T cell zone to the follicles. So this is kind of, uh, I guess, confusing whenever you think about it here, that we have this, this is the HEV there, if you can, I don't know if you can see that or not. But as we're going out of here, we're um, kind of present in the primary lymphoid follicles. Here's the B cell area. But if we have to leave, we have to go in and we have to travel and must pass through the T cell area. And as it's doing this, it's going to encounter T cells, right? So T cells are really good at activating B cells. That's why, that's why it has to do that. Um, so CXCR5 is a homing receptor. So it's R means any answer receptor for the primary cytokine CXCL13 produced by cells within the follicle. And on average, they remain in the follicle for 16 hours, after which they're going to depart to sample a new location for antigens, right? And if they want that signal, right? Because if they get that signal, then they're going to be able to differentiate and reproduce even more, which is good for them in terms of their uh, selective fitness, and it's good for us in terms of surviving infections. So here's a diagram that just illustrates all of the points we talked about. So... And it tells us right here the germlines that we have for each and every one. So stem cell, everything's germline. Early pro B cell, everything is still germline. But by the time we formed a late pro B cell, we now have had DJ D and J heavy chain recombination. And then by the time we form a large pre B cell, we have VDJ uh, recombination taking place. And by the time we have formed a small pre B cell, we've had light chain recombination happening and thus giving us an immature B cell. So the immature B cell is going to leave the bone marrow and interest the peripheral circulation. And then the immature B cell, which is going to start to developing IgD, in, at least in low concentration, is going to gain access to the primary lymphoid follicles and start to mature even further as it's coming in contact with T cells. 
um, and antigen presenting cells. The mature naive B cells, so cells that have developed further but they haven't um, quite presented themselves to antigens, are going to enter the circulation and bind to specific antigen in the lymphoid tissue and draining of the infection areas. Then the activated B lymphoblast, as if that wasn't crazy enough, is going to become a plasma cell and then a memory cell. And that's the processes of everything that we just kind of talked about, summed up in one nice little picture. We have tolerance induction. So this is all kind of happening during the process of negative selection. We have a B cell receptor that is reactive to self antigens and we do self proteins and you don't want that to be the case. We want to try to make them tolerant of their neighbors, tolerant of the other cells that are around them. This is location of this is in the bone marrow. I should say it's in the bones because you know where that is. Um, and this is synonymous with, with the phrase of negative selection. The three mechanisms that we are using for this, or at least to, to bring about this, is receptor editing, clonal deletion, and then lastly we have clonal inactivation, where the cells are being inactivated, or energy is the same term. So one of the things that's interesting is both receptor editing and then clonal deletion are mechanisms that we're going to use in response to a multivalent self-antigen. Multivalent self-antigens are what we're talking about here. So for receptor editing, this is where we just have continuous light chain recombination. I'm going to bring back the tools for that. Remember, whenever I do R circle, I mean recombination. And there are two consequences of this. Um, it's either going to be uh, yield a successfully a tolerant B cell receptor, um, or it won't. So if it works, if this works, then it's great. We are going to be really happy, and we're going to move on. But if it fails, then we're going to have apoptosis. And clonal deletion is actually just that, where we've tried to. Uh, rearrange our light chains over and over and over again to hopefully produce something that can not attack our own cells but at the end of the day it ends up we end up having to have apoptosis to come in and do that so for energy um, whereas these guys over here it was all about a multivalent antigen for energy it's all about a monovalent self antigen and what this process is we basically just shut them off or in the case of uh, certain T cells will come in and kill them, but usually we just kind of inactivate them and then let them die. So they become inactive, and then in, in, five days later, at the most, well, they won't be doing apoptosis. Well, yeah, they will be doing apoptosis, but through the mechanisms of just regular cellular decay. The next really big picture that, uh, or the next thing that I really wanted to mention would be at least, would be immature transitional B cells, and this is kind of peripheral tolerance, if you can think about it immature transitional B cells, aka peripheral tolerance, is the mechanism that's happening. These are the cells themselves that are undergoing this process here. So there's two consequences of peripheral tolerance, or really just three, um, but clonal deletion is going to happen and then energy is going to happen. It's interesting because yeah, the, they were not grouped together um, in, in, in the central tolerance, but in peripheral tolerance they are. So in case this wasn't obvious, peripheral tolerance, we're talking about stuff that's in the periphery, in the bloodstream, for example, or in the tissue spaces of infection cells, your own tissue spaces, right, your own connective tissue. And the reason that we can only use these two here is by the time we become an immature transitional B cell, the, there is no more room for light chain recombination. Not gonna happen, no, not gonna happen. However, there are certain areas in peripheral tolerance that if they are exposed to, because they're, they're essentially kept locked away from the immune system, that if they're exposed to peripheral tolerance, they will exhibit reactions. Um, they will be reactive and nothing will be done about them. Two examples of this would be the, really the most important things that develop the way that we think. Um, the testes and then the brain. So if we have a, a barrier, a blood barrier for both your testes and for your brain, right? Because if your blood were to get into these sites, aside from the obvious tissue damage that would be taking place there, your own immune system would attack your brain. It would recognize it as a foreigner because 
He didn't know that you had then. It was, he kept separate this entire time. Same thing for your testes, especially if you're a guy, because your immune system develops before your, you hit puberty, right? For guys, at least. Um, so you'll have a reaction there. And the next thing would be positive selection. What this whole thing has to do is with B cell receptor affinity. How strong does it bind? Uh, and what are the consequences of this? How much stimuli is it receiving? What are the processes that are happening here? And if it becomes a mature, um, I'm just going to make the assumption that if it becomes a mature B cell, if it becomes immature, it's going to have a very short life cycle. But if it becomes mature, then it's going to have a very long life and it's going to be constantly being recycled through the lymphatic system. So a very long life, in the lymph nodes, and in the lymph itself, and they are being, I should say lymph, being recycled back and forth, in and out. 